Hey guys, it's Anne. Welcome to the channel. And this morning we are going to take a look in on my DIY stacked system. So we're going to peel back the uh, bubble wrap here. See if we've got any hangers on. And then we're going to, whoop, there we go. Back in. Back in. It's okay, I just fold that and put it over there. So if there's any little tiny ones that I didn't see, then it will be okay. So let's have a look at the top layer here. And it's been refreshed pretty recently. I'll put the date below. But let's, let's dig in here and see what we've got. You can already tell they're making some really good castings. Um, even though there's a really thick layer of just regular bedding on top, uh, the worms stay below and do what they do, which is make castings. So let's dig through here a little bit and see if we can find the food and see how the worms are doing. So one of the things that I, I think about is, you know, people who use different stuff for bedding. This is, you know, almost entirely paper bedding, shredded cardboard, shredded junk mail. And my castings are brown like milk chocolate when I get uh, castings from that kind of bedding substrate. But if you're using leaves and things like that, your castings are going to be almost black. I don't honestly know if there is a difference in the quality of the castings. The books that I have read talk more about the food stock being more the uh, the difference in, in the quality of the castings. So honestly, they say that like horse manure and things like that actually come up with the, uh, the best castings, but since I do not have access to that, mine get food scraps. I'm also getting my uh, <clears throat> springtails are still awake. My blue worms are starting to wake up a little bit more. Everybody's still pretty wiggly. Looking at what they're doing here. I'm not really seeing any cocoons at this moment, but if you see any cocoons, let me know. Sometimes when I'm going through very quickly, I can't necessarily see cocoons that well. I usually see them when I'm editing and I'm like, oh look, all the cocoons. So let's see. Still digging, finding more springtails. You know, and maybe it's just because, you know, we're coming up to that part of the year where we don't normally, you know, it's, it's a little bit cool. You know, it's up to 68 degrees Fahrenheit in the basement now. And even though that's only, you know, like four degrees warmer than it had been a month ago, I'm seeing a lot of difference in the way the worms are physically behaving. I see they're a lot more wiggly. Um, so that's, that's good. That means they're going to really start pushing and eating a lot more. Now this bin here is a combination of the red wigglers, the European night crawlers, and the blue worms that I got from Uncle Jim's all those years ago. Oop, I think I found the food in the corner here don't remember what it was, but I kind of smell onions. Oh, this is, um, oh, what is it? It's not an onion. It's a shallot. So again, with the forbidden foods, worms eat shallots. Let's see what else is in here. Avocado pit. Um, looks like more shallot. They're kind of big, so... Maybe I didn't feed them much more than just a handful of shallots. I also don't remember how many weeks ago it was. I'm thinking it's been about three weeks. I'll put that in there too. So it looks like they're, they are getting to the shallots, getting into this pit. So we'll put that back over there. And like I normally do, I usually evaluate every single layer of this three layer DIY system before I decide what to do as far as food. If there's a bunch of food, then we don't feed. Uh, looking right now, um, you know, it's possible that one of the other layers is gonna need some food. 
So let me pull this layer off and we'll get down to the middle layer. Okay, so here we are in the middle layer. And just looking on the top here, normally um, it's a good place to find cocoons if you're gonna find them. So I'm looking, looking to see if I see anything and I don't. But the moisture it seems to be a really super happy moisture for the worms. It is, is not the kind of moisture you'd want to have to harvest in, but since this whole bin has been refreshed recently, we are, you know, three or six months away from actually harvesting. So that is perfectly okay if it's, you know, not in any way, shape, or form ready to be harvested. Keep it a little bit wetter when it's new. Uh, the worms seem to enjoy it. They breed better. And uh, one of the books that I was reading actually said that, you know, the worms can still live and, and, and everything when it's a lower moisture, but they actually lose weight and they get littler. And that was one of the things that I was wondering about my systems when I see that my worms are so much smaller than they were when I bought them, if it's the moisture I keep my bins at. You know, do they, you know, they're not all bulked up because, oh, there's a cocoon because there's not enough moisture. So, little tiny cocoon there. So, and that makes sense, you know, but right now the bin is, is pretty wet. So, I don't know if this is as big as they get because the bin is this wet. It's not quite muddy, but it's close. Not really finding any food quite yet, but we'll keep flipping. Let's see what we get. Got the new paper bedding here. So maybe that's why they're they're healthier and they breed more when they're at a higher moisture. That makes sense. Alright, see, what is this? A little piece of orange or a lime or something? So here's another forbidden fruit, lime. Worms are all in that on purpose, all by themselves. Little baby worm by my thumb there, and then juvenile worms. And they are not bothered by it at all. They had lots of options to get away from it if they wanted to, and they chose to be in the lime. All right, still digging. I can smell it now, that is definitely a, a lime. Sometimes it's hard to tell after they've been at it for a while. Is it a lime, is it a lemon? Got that uh, grape stem we put in a while ago, probably a couple months. Let me see, this is what happens to a avocado pit after it, you know, has died and the worms get into it. But you can see it kind of turns that vanilla pudding, you know, maybe even caramel pudding color. And then you know it won't be long, that will be gone in a month or so. When they're still white, I think they're still capable of uh, growing, which I see a lot of in my bins. Um, but you can't really tell from the outside, like this is still super hard. So, you know, I don't know if this is gonna grow or not. Ooh, springtails all over. So I'm not seeing any food except for that one little piece of lime. And uh, we don't really count the pits as being food. That's definitely slow food. So we're going to put that all back, and then let's look at the bottom layer. Okay, and one of the things that I, I told myself that I was going to do was I was going to put the slow food in the bottom because this does stay wetter than the rest of the bin because the moisture from all the food usually ends up down here. So I should probably go grab those avocado pieces and put it down here. Now, I don't intentionally put the worms down here. This was originally a sump. And um, they, the worms just kept coming down here and drowning. And so I uh, decided to put bedding. And then eventually I just went with what the worms wanted to do and just started treating this like a normal layer of the bin. But most of the year, this portion of the bin stays wetter than the rest. So that's why I thought it would be a good idea, you know, to put the really long-term food down here. Let me know your thoughts on that. Is that smart? Does that make sense to you? That, you know, if you keep it someplace where there's no chance of it drying out, 
that that would be a good place to put your uh, long-term food that is not going to uh, get any sort of love anytime soon. Oops, let's see. What do you think? Are they going to be all inside? I can delicately do that. Yep. They are all inside that mango pit. I'm not going to pull it apart. I'm just going to let them play with it. And so this is still that pink color. So I still think it's a possibility that it might want to grow. Um, but I do live in Illinois, so it's not like they're going outside and going to be in the garden or anything. They're just going to be house plants. That maybe 10 years from now I will get fruit from my house plants. All right, so let me go grab those other little pieces that are long-term food off of that other level, and uh, then we'll start feeding them up. All right, so I just rescued some grape stems, uh, avocado pits, and avocado shell. And I'm just going to put that down here and then spread things back out a little bit. It'll stay nice and wet down here because all the food that we're going to feed them the next layer up in a moment is all going to drip down here and then everybody will be happy. All right, let's reassemble. Right now, because this is so new, these are very light. They only weigh, you know, maybe 10, 15 pounds. When this gets full of castings, oh my gosh, this thing is so heavy. Oh wait, this is grapes. Let's put that below. So let's, let's do a feeding over here. And we're going to put the food right over here on top of where the uh, long-term food is. And maybe that will help. We'll get the juices from the new food dripping down in the holes. I don't know if you can see the holes or not, but there's a hole right there. It's a really tiny hole. And uh, the juice will drip down there, get on the other food, and hopefully make the slow food a little bit faster. Okay, so looks like I've got some avocados and some lemons. And I've learned from experience that if you don't break things open, they kind of, like citrus in particular, they'll like desiccate. And then you never like, like the, they'll desiccate, but the worms won't be able to eat the flesh. So I'm going to open those up. There are probably about three or four pounds of worms in here. And, oh, this is a avocado. I always feel bad about that. I love avocados. All right, so then we're going to put that over the top of there. Get that nice and covered up. Flatten that out, and let's get the top layer. All right, so for the top layer, we also didn't find any food. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to feed on the opposite side so the drippings can go through and there can be um, drippings that go down to the second layer and the third layer to hopefully help them do that. But I'm going to put down some of the bedding and we'll get them some food. Okay, so what we have here is... Okay, well here we are from a moment ago. The feeding has already been put in there and uh, the, the camera stopped again. So I think it's time for me to buy a new camera. I'm not sure what's going on with this, but uh, so the top layer has its full feeding. Uh, the DIY system does have its own playlist, so I will link that at the end. Also, if you like this video, give it a muddy thumbs up. If you're not a member of my worm family, click that subscribe button. And if you wanna know what I'm doing when I'm doing it, ring that bell icon. All right guys, thanks for hanging out with me and my worms and everybody have a good day.